Hello and welcome to Bite Size History, History of the United Kingdom, brought to you by AI Cast. I'm your host Aidan. In this episode, we will be exploring trade and exchange in Middle Iron Age Britain, a period spanning from roughly 400 BCE to 100 BCE. As we discuss the intricate networks of trade, we will examine how these exchanges influence the social, economic, and cultural landscape of Iron Age Britain. The far-reaching connections that formed during this era connected communities across the British Isles and beyond. Before we dive into long-distance trade, it is essential to understand the local and regional exchange systems that were at the heart of Iron Age communities. At the most basic level, individuals and families would have traded and bartered goods and services within their communities. Agricultural products, livestock, and everyday items such as pottery, textiles, and tools would have been exchanged between neighbors, family members, and fellow community members. On a broader scale, regional exchange networks would have allowed different communities to trade with one another. These networks likely extended across tribal territories, allowing people to access a wider range of resources, including raw materials, finished goods, and specialist knowledge or services. For instance, one community might have specialized in pottery production, while another might have been known for its skilled metalworkers. Through regional exchange networks, these communities could trade their goods and expertise, benefiting from each other's strengths. The development of trade routes and transportation systems was crucial in facilitating the exchange of goods and ideas in Middle Iron Age Britain. Several key factors influenced the location and development of these trade routes. Firstly, the natural landscape played a crucial role, with rivers, coastlines, and established pathways providing convenient means of transport. River valleys, such as those of the Thames and the Severn, were particularly important, providing navigable waterways that connected inland communities with coastal regions and facilitated access to seaborne trade routes. In addition to rivers and waterways, land routes were also vital for trade and communication in Middle Iron Age Britain. These routes often followed ridgeways and other elevated areas, which provided good visibility and protection from flooding. As a result, these routes would have been easier to maintain and safer for travel, making them popular choices for long-distance trade and communication. Another important factor in the development of trade routes was the distribution of natural resources. In particular, the location of valuable raw materials such as metals, salt, and high-quality stone would have encouraged the establishment of trading centers and routes. Communities that controlled access to these resources would have been in a strong position to engage in regional and long-distance trade, often acting as intermediaries between producers and consumers. While local and regional exchanges formed the backbone of Iron Age trade, long-distance trade and international connections also played a significant role in shaping the economic and cultural landscape of the period. Middle Iron Age Britain was not an isolated island but was part of a complex web of connections that extended across Europe and beyond. Some of the key long-distance trade partners for Iron Age Britain included the Mediterranean world, Gaul, modern-day France and Belgium, and the Atlantic seaboard. Contacts with these regions were facilitated by a combination of land and sea routes, with traders and travellers making use of river systems, coastal navigation, and the open sea to transport goods and people across vast distances. The influence of these international connections can be seen in the archaeological record, with imported goods and materials providing evidence of the far-reaching contacts that were maintained during this period. For example, the presence of Mediterranean pottery and wine amphorae in Iron Age Britain demonstrates the links between the British Isles and the wider Mediterranean world. Similarly, the importation of raw materials such as copper and tin from areas such as Brittany, Cornwall, and Ireland highlights the importance of Atlantic trade connections. These long-distance trade networks not only allowed Iron Age communities to access valuable resources and exotic goods but also facilitated the exchange of ideas and cultural practices. For instance, the introduction of coinage in Middle Iron Age Britain can be traced back to contacts with the Mediterranean world, where coinage had been in use for centuries. The adoption of this innovation in Britain demonstrates the flow of ideas across these trade networks and the willingness of Iron Age communities to adopt new technologies and practices. The goods that were traded in Middle Iron Age Britain were diverse, encompassing both everyday items and luxury goods. Common trade goods included agricultural products, such as grain, livestock, and dairy products, as well as pottery, textiles, and tools. In addition to these everyday items, there were also more valuable goods that were exchanged across long distances. Some of the most highly sought-after luxury items in Iron Age Britain included metals, such as gold, silver, and bronze, as well as high-quality stone, glass, and coral. These materials were used to create a range of intricate and valuable items, such as jewelry, weapons, and other decorative objects. The importation of these luxury goods not only demonstrates the wealth and status of those who possessed them but also highlights the complex trade networks that were in place during this period. 
The development of trade and exchange networks in Middle Iron Age Britain had a profound impact on the social, economic, and cultural landscape of the time. Firstly, trade allowed communities to access a wider range of resources and goods, which in turn supported the growth of specialized industries and craft production. This specialization, in turn, led to the development of more complex social hierarchies, as skilled craftsmen, traders, and other specialists emerged as key figures in Iron Age society. The exchange of goods and ideas across long distances also facilitated the spread of new technologies, practices, and artistic styles. This process of cultural exchange enriched the lives of Iron Age communities, as they adopted and adapted new ideas to suit their own needs and preferences. Moreover, the presence of exotic goods and materials would have conferred status and prestige on their owners, reinforcing social hierarchies and fueling competition between rival groups. Finally, the development of trade networks also supported the growth of political power and the emergence of more complex forms of social organization. As communities became more interconnected through trade, they were also more likely to form alliances and engage in conflict with one another. These shifting relationships and power dynamics laid the groundwork for the rise of more powerful tribal confederacies and, eventually, the development of the Oppida, large fortified settlements that emerged in late Iron Age Britain. In conclusion, trade and exchange in Middle Iron Age Britain played a crucial role in shaping the social, economic, and cultural landscape of the time. From local bartering to international trade networks, the movement of goods, people, and ideas across the British Isles and beyond helped to forge connections, foster innovation, and drive social and political change during this fascinating period of history. Thank you for listening. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time on Bite Size History.